magical beings. Look around. For we are the sages, the seers, the gypsies, the geniuses and dropouts who have escaped the psychosis of the collective mind in our search for truth and freedom. We're to take individual self-expression as far as we possibly can and dream into reality a much better world. We honor tribalism. We embrace fire, illuminating our path to a new beginning. Fernando del Sol, I'm a traveler, and we are at Burning Man 2016, Caravan of Light Camp. Oh, it's beautiful, man. The light on that mountain, crazy. I believe that Burning Man is a rite of passage in a culture that no longer provides that. I came to Burning Man, I owned a cafe in San Francisco called Mommy Toby's Revolution Cafe named after my grandmother, very successful. And every year, for two or three years, people were coming back from this place called Burning Man, the desert, and I had no idea what it was, but I just knew that they were beaming light, you know. I didn't know if it was gay, punk, anarchist, I couldn't tell because everybody was different coming from this thing, and so I, I decided in 96, with a couple of friends. We jumped in a, in a van with the timber wolf and a beautiful stripper. And we came out here and it was, the year, that year was, was Dante's Inferno, the theme, hell. And uh, it just blew our minds, man. What happened out here that year was, was probably the first year that Burning Man launched completely because they had built this whole mock city of America with with life-size fast foods and taco hell and Kentucky Fried Colonel Sanders had horns and McSatan's arches and and they came out one night in a huge like a huge skyscraper it looked like one of the Twin Towers and a big sign in front that said Helco Inc. Helco Inc. One night I heard a couple hundred drummers just going we all came out there and it was all lit up and these guys came out in these protective military outfits and they bazooka all the fast food and then these flamethrowers just came and just set it all on fire and these remote control claws like 25 feet up in the air came and grabbed all the burning structures and then spun debris in every direction people had to run for their lives man it was crazy then the last thing left standing was the was the high rise and john law who was the leader of the anarchist survival research lab starts to climb like Godzilla window to window up the corner in his in his long duster and his cowboy hat. He gets to the top, he holds onto the corner of the of the uh, building, he lights a, like a cartoon stem bomb and he drops it in there, shot fire a hundred feet up in the air and exploded. We thought he was dead. The cat comes flying off a off a zip line through the through the uh, the Helco arts the sign, explodes, he lands on his feet and he just threw his hat and everybody just went rah, and that's when the Burning Man really started in my mind. Because after that, we all went back and told everybody we knew you got to come to Burning Man. And so I, I was so, I was so inspired that I decided to sell my cafe and make a film on Burning Man called Where's the Fire, with Larry Harvey, the founder. And that year, they ended up, Larry ended up splitting up with the anarchists because several people had been killed, and everyone was driving on the playa, and they had the rave camps four miles away, and and uh, Larry wanted to kind of impose some rules, like no driving on the playa, that we create camping over here, you know, and, and no more guns, because people used to walk around those days with guns, and they had drive-by shooting ranges with machine guns, you could shoot Ronald McDonald and all these things. And so I made a film with Larry where he could put his message out to start to create civilization as opposed to anarchy. And um, that, was, that was the film, and I just, that film took me on the road for 10 years. I was, I was all over the place with film festivals and you know, spiritual communities. and It was the best thing I did. I sold my cafe to do it and I was so glad that I did because it, was, it took me from being anchored to traveling all over the world with this film. You know? It was great. And I see Burning Man as a, it's like a pressure release valve for America, who, whose leaders, our leaders are using fire in the most destructive way you know, with war and arms dealerships and all that stuff. 
And here we have the children of America coming from all over the world really now, coming here and utilizing fire in the most creative way. You know, living in America these days has been, I find it very stressful, man. It's like somehow the money has become so limited and scarce that people are really, really struggling to survive. And it's unnecessary. I don't know what the bankers are up to or how the economy works exactly, but if we could implement the gift economy and, and even barter system again and somehow create a hybrid, I think it would take a lot of the, a lot of the stress away. I mean, America is, I mean, it, it's become a dynasty or a, a, what do you call it, an empire in a sense, and it's, it's, on the, it's on the decline. And so in that decline, they've created somewhat of a police state. And the police, you know, they, they really need to be trained a little better in, in, in anger management and stuff. Because if you disrespect a police officer at all, like say no when he wants to hear yes, you end up getting beat down, you know. And then the, the prisons have become privatized. We've gone from 1 million prisoners to 2.3 million prisoners in this country. And they need to fill their quota because they get so much, they get like 50 grand a prisoner every year. And it's... It's a, it's a bad formula, man. We just have to shift it. And I was really trusting that, I was hoping that Bernie Sanders' message would at least uh, wake up a lot of people, and it has. It, it brought a lot of issues to the, to the table, to the, to the democratic debates. But I'm, I'm a little concerned if, if uh, Donald Trump gets in power, or even, quite honestly, even, even Hillary Clinton, because she's, she's definitely status quo, and she was a big part of the prison industry going private with her with her husband's just say no I mean I just you know the uh, three strikes and you're out policy the the, uh, the crime bill and so I, I'm you know I have a lot of hope for this country but it's been hijacked and I really hope that somehow naturally like a blade of grass that grows through a, a sidewalk and buckles that cement we, we got to somehow get this country back on track it's it's our responsibility you know, I don't ever give up on America. I love America, you know, but I'm not so proud of it right now. And I wish that we could all wake up and start to just do the right thing. It's, it's got to happen. Humanity is so beautiful. I mean, you see it out here. And the amount of creativity and when the dust gets on everybody, everybody just becomes beautiful, you know. I don't, I don't really necessarily believe in a heaven. I believe in heaven on earth. And we need to bring down heaven on earth and bring earth up to heaven and create that environment so that, I mean, the, this planet is so amazing. I can't think of a more beautiful planet than this. You eat a banana or a peach and it's just like, wow, well, it's, that's heaven to me, you know? So I'm, I have hope in America, but it's gotta, something's got to happen soon and hopefully it's not going to be violent and, and bloody and it can all be done organically somehow, you know? I trust that.